Hello, everyone. Welcome to week four of the 12 weeks of Christmas. I'm so glad that you guys are here. Um, I am just again making sure. Yeah, I'm live. Look at that. Dun, dun, dun. Um, yeah, thank you guys for joining me. So today I have a fun, easy project for you that you are going to be able to use over and over and over and over again, even when it's not Christmas season. So um, I think you're going to enjoy it today. Um, and you know what? I have instructions that I wrote down somewhere and I forgot that I had them. So I'm going to just pull those out here for a second. Okay. have to make myself all sorts of diagrams so that I can remember what I did when I come on here or when I'm teaching a class and uh, so that I can make sure that you guys can actually follow along with what I'm doing. <laughs> I'll always kind of wait for everyone to come online tonight. Uh, again, just welcome you all here. A reminder about the cards, coffee, and Christmas cheer. Um, we are getting close to our class, actually. You know what is this next weekend? Not the weekend that's coming up, but so a week, love, just about 10 days, I guess, until November the 1st. Can you believe that? 10 days until November 1st? That's crazy. Um, but sign up, I guess, probably before next Tuesday at the latest, uh, be able to take some registration. So if you have a friend or a family member or have yet to register, you just, it's been on your to-do list, but haven't, uh, please be sure just either drop me a message or there's also a link. If you click on the link in the description of this, um, the link tree description or link tree link, if you go there, there's a link to register for this class and you can just sign up right online as well. So I hope you'll consider joining me. This is an in-person event here in Medicine Hat. Uh, we always have a lot of fun when we stamp together. So I hope that you'll be able to come. <clears throat> Okie dokie. Well, let me get started here. This is a super simple uh, project. And what I want to show you is how to make a gift bag. So I know when I am gift giving, even at the holidays, sometimes you get your gift and then you forget to have a wrapping. Or when you make kind of your own personalized bag like we do today, you can co coordinate it with your card and um, or with your gift. You can make it a theme, whatever you want. And it's just a real special touch to add to a gift. Uh, and it's really easy, really cost effective because all you need are two pieces of designer series paper. You need two pieces that are the same and you need to pay attention to if they have a pattern on them, which way your pattern is running. Uh, if you can go either way, then it doesn't really matter. But I love the designer series paper from Stamping Up because it has two sides and they coordinate so nicely together. Because for the gift bag that we're going to make today, I'm going to show you how to, um, I guess, feature both designer series paper in one bag. Uh, it's kind of like making a border around the top, and it's just really nice. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So we will um, make that tonight. But what you do for one piece, you're going to do the exact same thing for the other piece. So um, I am, I should have actually done one ahead of time, but that's okay. Here we go. We'll just do it together. It's honestly so quick that it doesn't even matter. So what you're going to do is you are going to score. So you need your scoring blade. Again, we're going to need our paper trimmer. We use this a lot. So if you do not have a paper trimmer, um, it really is kind of a staple for your crafting and your um, stamping. So make sure that you grab one. The Stampin' Up! one is awesome because it does come with a scoring blade as well as a cutting blade. And then it measures up to six inches while it's closed, which I really love because a lot of them only measure up to like four. Um, so you're constantly opening this arm, which is okay, but when you're in a hurry. Um, but the arm opens up and it will actually measure up to 17 inches. So it's quite a large measure, cutter, scorer, uh, which is fabulous for both scrapbooking, card making, all of your craft making. Okay, so on three sides of your designer series paper, you are going to score at three inches. So put your paper up to three inches and we're going to score down that side. And again, so this is on the two sides as well as on the bottom. We're not going to do this on the top. Okay, so three inches all the way around the two sides and the bottom. 
And then on the top, we're going to score at one inch. And you really don't have to score at one inch at the top if you want the full length of the bag. The nice thing about doing this is that it gives you a little bit extra strength at the top because that's kind of where we get the most sort of use or most wear on our bag is along the top. Uh, putting the gift in, maybe, you know, holding it, etc., etc. If we decide to add a handle on it, that's where our handle is going to go. Okay, so we did one. Now we need to do the second piece of paper exactly the same. So again, three inches on both sides and across the bottom. Okay, so we did three inches, three inches, like easy, right? We can all do this. And one more side. <clears throat> Um, the other thing I want to say, if you wanted to leave the top, like if you had a little bit of a taller gift, you could not do this top part with the one inch and just leave it. That'll give you a another inch on your gift bag. But this gift bag is going to give you a bag that is six inches tall uh, by, no, 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 six inches wide. How tall is this bag? Let me just see. That will be uh, 12 minus three and nine minus one. It'll be eight. So eight inches tall by six inches wide, and then you've got the three inches deep. So it actually is a nice size bag um, for most gift giving. Okay, we can set this aside now. Let's set our um, scoring tool aside, and we are going to take our paper snips or a pair of our paper cutting scissors that are nice and sharp, and we are going to cut up the sides here so the score line that goes from the bottom up to that next score line at three inches we're going to just give that a cut okay just like that and again what we do on one we're going to do on the other easy right and it's going to be so cute you're going to see I show you the final. I've made a couple of them here to show you the different ideas. And Duchess again is coming to just make her debut. So she may um, show up here in the camera in a moment. All right. So we also want to make sure that we um, score these edges or fold them really nicely before we get making our bag. So I'm going to go ahead and just fold over all of my edges. Today, my poor Simba, if you remember, he was sick the other week. Well, today he got his tail, well, we think his tail shut in the door. Um, he let out a good hiss anyways, um, and immediately went to the basement and hid. And so we have seen him since. I've gone down there and he let me kind of give him a pet. Um, but then he immediately went back and hid again. And he will not let our other cat near him. He just hisses and... Um, growls at her. So he definitely wants his privacy. Um, but then when he came out, he was actually limping. And so I'm not sure if maybe he um, got his foot in the door and not his tail, but or his tail might just be sore and it's making him limp. I'm not sure. But anyways, that cat is accident prone, I swear. Like if someone's going to get hurt, he just always seems to be doing something that he probably shouldn't be doing or in the wrong place at the wrong time <laughs> getting his tail shut so anyway so now we've got some more cat drama in our house and we'll have to just sort of see how that works out okay we've got all of our things folded over so remember how we scored one inch at the top we're going to actually fold that one backwards like this so now we've got our two patterns and um, that complement each other, kind of showing up on our bag. This is, again, going to be that top piece. So it's going to add a little bit of strength to the top of our bag. And there we go. Okay. So this is where we get things a little bit different. Okay. So on one of our bags, on only one of our bags, this one, I'm just going to kind of set this one aside for right now. Um, and we are going to start adding some tape. So like I said, I'm going to use our strongest tape. You could use our Stamp and Seal Plus. It's really strong too, uh, but I like tearing tape. So we're going to go ahead and on the two side panels, we're going to add tearing tape. So we're going to add a piece up here all the way down here to that fold line. Okay. 
And then we're going to add another one. So again, give it a nice little burnishing. It makes it easier to get the, the plastic off of the top. And then we're going to put another one down here. All the way down like this. And we're going to tear it. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same on this side. So now we've got our two insides with tear and tape. And so I'm going to show you here after how nice it's going to look when we coordinate this with a card. We're actually going to use our card to kind of decorate our bag. Um, it's really simple and easy. And actually, I got this idea from a set, another Stampin' Up! demonstrator named Rhonda Wade um, out of the United States. Um, I saw this on her channel last year or the year before, maybe even at this point, and um, just thought, wow, that's a great idea. So here we are. Anyways. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to think. Okay, we are going to add um, some tape here along the bottom of the other piece of the other piece of um, designer series paper. Okay. Okay. The reason we're going to do that is we are going to now take this off. So we, by burnishing that a little bit, it just kind of comes off a lot easier. And now we're going to fold this up like that. So I kind of just put it along the fold line and then I'm going to match up actually this edge. If you understand what I'm saying, it's kind of hard to show on camera. I'll show you in a minute. So we're going to just line up this edge here and then we're going to just give it a nice good fold and then we'll bring this one up and do the same thing on this side. We're going to just match up these edges in a perfect world. Come on. Okay. There we go. All right. I made that look a lot harder than it is. So we've got our edges lined up here. So we've got our square, just like so. Okay. And actually, we're going to do the exact same thing on this side. With a little more tape. So really, this isn't hard. It just takes a little bit of a little bit of adhesive, but you can use anything that matches the gift that you want to give. So if you had a candy theme, you could get some paper that had candy on it. Um, if it's birth birthday, something nice and bright and fun um, and not have to go buy a bag every time because this is a lot less than a dollar <laughs> uh, to create this bag. Okay. Which I mean, even if you went to the dollar store is what I'm trying to say. You probably wouldn't be able to make this bag quite as cheap. Okay. All right. We're lining up our edges again, creating another bottom. So we've done that on both pieces. Okay. We've put up our bottom. Now we've got basically two boxes, right? Okay. So what we're going to do now is we are going to take off this adhesive along the sides and we're basically going to just stick that other box into here. Okay, now this I didn't burnish very well. And if you hear any scratching, that is my cat scratching tape. Okay, and I'm just going to do one side and I'm going to come back and do this side. And the reason is because I find everything's getting stuck, not where I want it. So we're going to kind of just stick this in here and try to line up some of our edges. So that it is going to line up along the side like so. Okay. If we get one side down, the other side is going to just stick nicely. Okay. So we've got that. And now we're going to do the other side. You could add some adhesive in here if you wanted to. We'll stick one piece. But you don't really need to. The sides hold it nicely. Um, but you can. We'll just stick one here because we can. Just so that it hold that edge down. All right. So, but before I do that, 
So I'm going to take this off. Again, burnish it if it's not coming off. There's Duchess. Duchess, say hi. <laughs> is she in the camera? No, she's not. Duchess, you got to come in the camera and say hi. So this is the one who's trying to be kind to her brother, brother from another mother, and uh, who is not having it. He is just going to hiss and get so upset with her. But she is trying to love on him and take care of him, aren't you, Duchy? Okay. So there we go. So now that side was way easier to stick in when we did it that way. Okay. So we've got all our edges in. I'm just going to actually put it like this. And I just take my bone folder in here. I'm going to give it just a little bit of a rub down like this to make sure it's like sticking really nicely. And we're burnishing all of our adhesive together. And there we go. So we have got our box done. All right. The one thing, the side that has like where all the paper kind of is lined up that's going to be the back so then on the front we don't have any of those edges it's all like seamless and see like we don't have any rough edges any holes anything sticking up and it just looks like that so it's super super cute we've got our little christmas bag i tried it out to see how much i could hold in here like if it was strong i put in here a couple heavy punches some some ink some of my tools and it wasn't bending, it wasn't ripping, it wasn't breaking. So you've got a nice strong bag here. Now, let's decorate this up. So do you remember this card that we made um, last week? Was it last week? Just last week? It feels like forever ago. We're going to use that to decorate the front of our bag. Okay, and there's a bunch here that I just had to kill. Okay, um, so again, we're going to use these clear envelopes. Uh, you can buy them in packages of 50. They come out to about 10 cents of an envelope. So they're really, um, again, another cost-effective thing to have on hand. They work really well for these screens on your shaker cards. They're also great for this. And where did my tape go? I should ask my cat, probably. Um, well, geez Louise, where are you? Okay, we might have to revert to um, plan B on the tape because I think my cat might have stolen my tape. Let me see if I have another roll here in my drawer. Well, cats are fun to craft with, aren't they? Okay, well, let's not do that then. I don't know where she put my tape. Okay. Anyways, we have got our envelope. So what we're going to do is I've turned it over so the flap is like the long side with the flap is actually on the back. And I was going to use tearing tape, which I can't find. So just for this um, lesson, <laughs> I'm going to just use um, liquid adhesive. It doesn't, it takes a while to dry on here is why I don't really like to use it for this project. Um, but we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, and I'm going to add some up here. So I'm going to just fold over the top of this so that it lines up with the front of the envelope. We don't need the flap. And then we're going to just burnish it like we would paper. And it's going to kind of hold it over. And then we can use the adhesive that is actually on the envelope. But I like it to stick closer to the top of the envelope when I am doing this. It just holds on better to the bag. And then we're going to actually just stick this on the front of our bag in the center, just like so. And tearing tape is going to work so much better because this is going to wiggle around because it takes a while to dry. So I'm going to just maybe turn this over again and give it a little bit of a burnishing like this from inside the bag and just see if I can get it to hold on nice and tight. I really think that this... Um, channel is just becoming like you know reasons why not to have cats 101 so anyways welcome <laughs> so many things okay and then you just stick your card in here so one they can take their card out and then put it back in without wrecking you know without wrecking the envelope so they can keep it in here if they want to um with their gift so it just kind of sits here on the front but it also acts as a really nice decoration for your bag so there's just a number of reasons that uh that it works well okay so we have this bag here i do have some 
um, what do you call this paper? I ain't forget. Tissue paper that I just bought at the dollar store. Sorry for all the noise. And just to show you kind of what it looks like. So you've got this little bag here and it's just absolutely adorable. Come on camera, focus. With the tissue paper in there. And again, it's eight inches tall, uh, six inches wide. So it's a quite like a large size bag. You could also use a strip of designer series paper uh, to make a handle if you wanted to, or you could use some ribbon. So I would just actually add either just staple this on to the inside of the bag here, uh, or you could use a brad or something like that as well. Um, if you had something really heavy in there, though, I don't know, I would think that it'd be better to use ribbon or to just leave it as a bag like this. So the other one that I made is using um, a card that you haven't actually seen yet. So it's this one. So this is um, the birds. Hmm, I can't remember what this is called. Country Lace Designer Series Paper. Um, and it comes with these beautiful, uh, this is um, some bir birds that are on that Designer Series Paper. I stamped some snowflakes on this card. Um, but this is just a real basic bag that I, by adding the card or the seasonal card that I had, kind of made it into a Christmas one. So this one I paired with gold tissue paper to match the gold strings. And I did add on here um, a wider ribbon for a handle. And the way I attached that is I just punched a hole in the side. And on this one, just for decoration, I wrapped it all the way around. You wouldn't have to do it that way. Um, but one, I found that it, it did add some strength to the bottom of your bag if you had something heavier, but it was also just kind of decorative. And then you've got your handle. And like I said, it holds quite a lot of weight. Um, so you, this bag was great. I was worried it was going to be a little bit flimsy. It wasn't. It held a lot of contents. It was nice and strong. And I love that you can coordinate the cards. Uh, with your bags and with the gift that you're going to give. So it's just fabulous. And anyway, it's super easy. You are never going to have to buy another gift bag in all of your life if you don't want to. Um, and I hope you enjoyed today's um, project. So we have reached week four. And I was trying to think, am I actually a week behind? Is this week five? Week four. We made treat sliders. We made shaker cards. We've made gift bags. We made... What else did we make? We made another card of some sort, I believe. You know what? I'm even drawing a blank. Go back further down on my Facebook page. You're going to find all of the different weeks that we have. You can also find all of my videos on my Facebook page. So if you want to just find them all in one place, they're all on my face, not Facebook, on my YouTube channel. Click the link tree link. It's going to take you to all of my links, including YouTube. And uh, you can just go there and watch all of my project videos, including the 12 weeks of Christmas. So again, thank you for joining me. Welcome. I hope you enjoyed this project and that you're going to give it a try. I'd love to see your projects that you make. As a last reminder, cards, coffee, Christmas cheer. You can register for that at the link as well, the link tree link that's in the description. So have a wonderful, wonderful day. And thank you guys so much for joining me.